Liverpool nil, Atalanta three, an absolute demolition, a destruction, a baptism under fire tonight, an annihilation at Anfield for Liverpool, an absolute calamity performance, devoid of any real inspiration, poor up front, defensively, it was almost a cowardice performance from Liverpool, they're not officially out, but they have their work cut out. They have to fly to Italy, score at least three goals to put this into extra time without conceding, four to win it in the 90 minutes. And that's in the middle of a big and an exhausting title race that they are in the middle of. This is the worst thing that could have happened to Liverpool at this stage. With that much energy and effort, they're now going to have to put into the next round but where did it go wrong so the next game sorry but where did it go wrong tonight for Liverpool and I think you have to first of all look at the lineup that was picked it wasn't Liverpool's strongest team by any stretch Sobersly, Salah, Robertson, Diaz, Jota all on the bench Jota just returning from injury so I do understand that but the rest of them starting weren't good enough they were sticky on the ball there wasn't the, the flow they couldn't settle. But I want to give a lot of credit there to Atalanta. Atalanta, I think, probably felt a little bit disrespected. They've got a couple of their best defenders missing uh, through injury, etc. And Liverpool not picking their best team in a quarterfinal of a big European competition. But they went out there and they defended resolutely. They had a really good, solid bank in the middle of, of sort of three centre-backs, four midfield players, and they made it really difficult for Liverpool to get in between their lines. And they countered so bravely because they countered with numbers. And I know Kelleher made an error leading to the first goal. A well-worked goal. It was an average shot from Skamaka. And it was an error for him. But Kelleher really, really and truly kept Liverpool in this game with early saves. Saves just before halftime. Saves in the second half as well. So although we get a bit of criticism for that one ball that went underneath him, he was very, very busy tonight indeed. They had a lot of good attempts on goal. But Skamaka puts on 1-0 up. And then just before half time, I mean, they really should have gone 2-0 up before half time. And you're thinking Liverpool are going to come out. They're going to get a rocket up their backside. They're going to have Jurgen Klopp absolutely give them the hair dryer treatment. I really felt as though they were going to be blown away. Gen genuinely, I honestly thought to myself, 110%, they're going to come out and blow them away in the second half. And the first 15 minutes, maybe even 20 minutes, and by the way, the substitutions were made. Salah was on the pitch. Sobersly on the pitch. Robertson on the pitch. Atlanta was still the better team for me. No, they didn't have the majority of the ball. That doesn't mean you're not the better team. They looked more dangerous. They looked more potent. And Liverpool didn't look like scoring. And then the second goal. Now, the level of scrutiny about this goal, and I want to make sure I pronounce the game, the gentleman's name, I think it's Charles uh, de Catalia, I think is how you pronounce it. Young Belgian player. Played onside by Konate. This happens. Kamaka then just, it's almost like he was walking. Konate and Joe Gomez turn around. What are they, waiting for the flag, waiting for a bus, waiting for the kettle to boil? No idea. They just watched Skamaka stroll into the box, tap it into the bottom corner and go 2-0. I, I couldn't believe what I was watching. Now, I've seen bad defending before in my life, but this, it, it wasn't even bad defending. It was like, did they hear a whistle? What happened? Why did they stop playing football and allow that second? I mean, check the betting apps. Genuinely, it was that bad. And then they nearly get an equalizer, but Mo Salah run offside. He didn't need to be offside. I have no idea. He's looking at the line. He's looking at the line and he's running offside. Should have been 2-1. Could have held his run. If he holds his run, he scores that goal most likely when he finished the chance. And then it's game on. But that didn't happen. And then Soboslai, who this has to go down as one of the worst cameo, one of the worst substitute, substitute appearances in the history of Liverpool Football Club, comes on playing football in his own half, which is a no-no at times, gets caught in possession. And Skamaka, who, listen, he got ridiculed in the Premier League at West Ham. He was poor. He's recently been criticised by the Italian FA, dropped from the Italian squad. But he was 
impeccable in front of goal tonight. And I thought it was really intelligent and really clever when it came to the goal because he sort of fakes the shot. And I was thinking, don't shoot from there. I wanted the third. Don't shoot from there. And he, what a delightful ball on the inside. So I believe Emerson. I want to say it was em, uh, it might have been Edison. Edison, sorry. And I don't know all the players at Atalanta. I'm not. I never profess to be a connoisseur of all things football. And it was well saved by Kelleher. Then the, the, the sort of tap in there put in by the ex-Chelsea man. And it was 3-0. And you're looking at Liverpool and you're thinking to yourselves, how has this happened? How has this been done? The party. The party is ending. And it is ending. You ever been to one of those house parties? It starts off amazing. Everyone's in a good mood. But it's getting close to the end of the night. And suddenly you've got a punch-up happening over there between two brothers Someone's wife's been sick on the floor. Some geezer's naked and they've painted on his face. Then the police arrive and, oh, then the people that actually own the house come home and everyone gets in trouble. That's what it's, This is what's happening to the farewell party for Klopp. They put it on Facebook and loads of strangers are turning up. Will they? Will they turn it round or not? Let me know your thoughts and feelings below. But tonight was an embarrassment. It was an embarrassment. And I mean, there's been no disrespect to Atalanta. Ten defeats in the league this year. Six in Serie A, which I don't believe is as strong as the Premier League. I don't, overall. They're up against a team that's second, but the same amount of points as the team that's top. A team that has been brilliant this year. A team with the best manager in the world. A team that I am going to hazard a guess here spends at least two to three hundred million pounds a year more on its salary and bonuses. Much bigger transfer kitty. They got they get beat. They got pounded, they got sliced, and they got diced. And I want to get your thoughts and I want to get your feelings on that tonight. I'm not going to 100% write Liverpool off. I'm not going to 100% do it because it's Liverpool and it's a European night. And we've seen Liverpool do madnesses. We've seen them produce greatness before in European competitions. But what they have to go and produce away from home has to be one of their greatest nights in European football ever. It has to be one of their greatest nights ever. And sandwiched in the middle, of big Premier League games in a title race. Are they going to be able to do it? I don't know. I want your views and I want your opinions below in the comments section, people. Uh, Gav here says, I've uh, not checked the news. Are there storms? A volcano heard uh, a fair a farewell tour had been grounded. <laughs> I panicked then. I thought they'd actually been a hurricane or something. Uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold. City scored three, but our three nil loss means more. I don't understand what you mean. Uh, no chance in hell Liverpool are winning the Prem. Listen, if they defend like that in two or three more games, and listen, everyone was predicting Arsenal's collapse in April. That could still come. But so far, with the draw against a rubbish team like Man United, battered tonight, not gone very well. Not gone very well for Jurgen Klopp and Liverpool. Klopp underestimated Atalanta putting out that squad. I don't know if he underestimated them. I think he prioritised the weekend's game against Crystal Palace. I do think, I mean, if I was uh, Gasparini, I would be using that. I'd be saying they disrespect us. They don't honour us. They think we're easy. I'd be pumping that into the man's ears. 110% I would. 110% you'd be pumping that into their ears because... Why would you not? You'd want to motivate your players. I don't think it was disrespect per se to Atalanta. Atalanta may have felt disrespected, but I think it was more sort of prioritizing what they what they what they're focusing on. The problem is when Klopp, the season where Klopp nearly won the quadruple, he didn't really prioritize per se. He just played. He tried to win every game. Maybe tonight was a little bit like the plot before where he goes to that league and the big trophies and and, and leaves other ones uh, lacking somewhat, maybe. But so I'd love to get your thoughts on that. So I'm just sending a link out to someone um, for the show's ask for it. Apologies, people. Uh, if Liverpool go trophyless, will Trent... Well, they're not trophyless. They've won a trophy this year. Let's not play down the Carabao Cup. But will Trent and VVD and co leave? No, not this summer. I don't think there'll be a mass exodus if they don't win this trophy. Uh, never thought Liverpool would lose a game. I mean, their home record is so impeccable. It rarely happens. But a battering like this, geez. A uh, rare good feeling as a Chelsea fan this season. <laughs> I hear you. Uh, that fifth place Champions League spot for the Prem teams is looking iffy. 
if they rest our first team, we can rest our first team for the Europa. Listen, it is West Ham losing tonight. Liverpool lost. Arsenal drew. City drew. There was a feeling that only if one or two of the teams won their first leg games this this round, especially as um, Liverpool up against an Italian team who I think we're fighting with for that fifth place as a league. Not that Liverpool are fighting for it. Not that they care. Not that Arsenal care about it. But um, yeah, it probably has damaged the coefficient somewhat, which puts a little bit more jeopardy on Villa and Spurs' games this weekend as well, which is just good for the Premier League from an entertainment perspective. It really is. Look, I'm going to bring out the panel now. We've got, we've got Tom Little. We've got man like G, we've got Sam, we've got Dio, we've got Strasbourg Steve are ready to come on and have their say. Any questions, send in your super chats. But Liverpool fans, how are you feeling? Remember to check out our sponsors, though, before you do anything. NordVPN. One, you've got to be protected online. 100%. You've got to be. If you're using the internet without a, without NordVPN, forget any other VPN provider, NordVPN, your personal data, your bank cards, your debit, debit card details, all of that is up for grabs from hackers. But even more importantly, your internet history isn't gone just because you wipe it off your phone. Your broadband provider knows everything you do, everything you look at. If you don't pay your broadband bill, people can check it out. With a VPN, it's, it clears it. No one can see anything that you're doing. I like that. Not that I'm up to any nonsense, any madnesses, but I just don't like people prying on what I'm doing. I like my privacy, just as I think most of you do. So get signed up to NordVPN. I'll give you four months for free as well. Scan that QR code on the screen or click the link in the, the description below at the end of the show and go and get yourself signed up and protect yourself. It's so important. Just go onto the website at the very least and read about how important it is. I cannot advocate it enough. Uh, time for the panel now to come out and have their say on, on the show. Uh, welcome back, uh, gentlemen. Commiserations, Liverpool fans. Um, Tom Little, what happened tonight, my friend? Because it was a battering to end all batterings. Um, you saw a team that hasn't played well all season, but got away with it. Finally, not get away with it. We haven't performed well. We've got good results, but we haven't performed well for large parts of the season. We just got our come up and today. They didn't miss their chances. We didn't take ours. That's been the story of our season, and it all culminated in that shit show, which is an embarrassment to the manager, who, don't get me wrong, I think the manager deserves a lot of criticism today because, oh my God. I, I, we, I actually watched my team get picked apart for 90 minutes defensively by man-to-man -man marking. They didn't do it. They didn't have some mad defensive structure. They just said, centre mid on centre mid, centre mid on centre mid, DM or attacking mid on DM, wingers on fullbacks, fullbacks on wingers, follow them round, and we just sort of went, oh no! What do we do? And then we just played into their hands with that. When you're up against a team who does man-to-man -man marking, you don't sit there and wait for the gaps to open up because the gaps are not going to open up because you're not breaking down a structure. It's the most basic level of defending. And for some reason, my manager didn't figure that out. Substitutions, horrendous today. Horrendous. We had about two good performers in that first half, and one of them was Gakpo. So at the second possible opportunity he could, he took Gakpo out of the position where he was performing well, put him in the middle where he was ineffective. Ineffective. Defensively, shambolic. Simicass, crap. Robertson, slightly better than crap. Not good, though. Van Dijk and Canate. The one thing I've learned about us, and it's been a thing for years, but especially in that game, but a team who likes to hold a high line, why can we not hold a line defensively? At no point in that game was our back four in a line. It would be three in the line and one about five yards deeper playing everyone on. The midfield, crap. Endo's been good this season, but my God, he could not receive the ball under any sort of pressure today. He'd receive the ball and just stand there taking a the crap touch and wait for himself to get tackled. The attackers, bar Gakpo, were all horrendous. All horrendous, and Gakpo wasn't much better than horrendous, but he was better than horrendous. Nunes, oh my God. How, <laughs> you, you're through on goal in the 20th minute, and you, literally, the goalkeeper couldn't give you more of the right hand side of the goal to aim for than doing the Bobby Firmino celebration they done with that. And yet, you put it the other side and missed. Gomez, oh, don't get me started on Gomez, man. Do not get me started on fucking Gomez. Stop shooting. 
There is a reason why you've not scored a goal in your entire professional career. It is not going to come from 35 yards out. It is going to come off your arse, off a corner. He's brain dead. He's a brain dead footballer, Tom. He's a brain dead footballer. It's not just... And, this is not the first time. As well. Klopp, Klopp, just... even, Klopp, even, Klopp even went on uh, uh, in an interviews a few months ago, turned around and said, crowd, please stop. That was his nice way of telling Joe Gamers, stop shooting from stupid fucking places. And it was the one we literally we, we had a corner, it got whipped in. It comes out to Joe Gomez. Well, actually, you know, we've got loads of people in the box. All he needs to do is just close it back in and he puts it into Road G of the cop and walks away. But do you know what? The fans today were horrendous. That ground was yeah. silenced. That ground was embarrassing for the Liverpool European night. And a lot of the people who went there should be ashamed of themselves. And you know, they don't help with this Gomez stuff. They don't. Sitting there every time he gets the ball in there off going, shoot. No. Pass the fucking ball to someone who scored more than zero goals in their entire career, and maybe we'll get somewhere. You know, the only good thing to come out today was everyone, and I mean everyone, crashed it to me on Amarin when he went out to Atalanta. It's not a bad result now, is it? Because he only drew what he drew one-one at home. He didn't lose three-nil. What are we doing Klopp, here? Then. Better than Klopp. I'm um, not saying anything. Well, I, I don't think you should crash it on Amarin then. Gee, the, the defending tonight, I understand the attack and we'll get onto that, but defending tonight, I felt that all three of your goals, I'm not taking anything away from Atalanta because they, they they sort of preyed upon it, but there was mistakes or people out of position. I mean, the second goal, I don't understand why Kanata and Gomez are just looking at Skamaka like they're waiting for the flag. I mean, it was just horrendous to watch tonight, defensively. <laughs> Listen, I always say this about Liverpool defensively is that at time we do lack leadership at the back at times, not all the time. Of course, you've got Van Dijk, there's, you know, one the best centre back in the world. So he'll kind of overshadow sometimes the defensive structure. But there are times I do look at the defence and I do think, like, where's the leadership back here? That's, that's the maddest part of the game. Like, not just looking at Van Dijk, by the way, this is looking at the whole defence. And we're not talking about inexperienced defenders. It's not like we've got Kwanzaa and Bradley back there where you can say, OK, fair enough, they're young, they're inexperienced, etc., etc. We're talking about Kanate and Gomez. Gomez, who's the longest-serving player at Liverpool Football Club. Kanate, who's played in Champions League finals. And these lot defended like this was the first time they'd ever met each other. That was the scary part. And it wasn't like Atalanta's forward line, by the way, which were very good for what they needed to do. It wasn't like they were doing crazy movement where you're like, Jesus Christ, I can't even find these guys. Just lack of communication. It was like the basic stuff that we were doing. But Tom said it there. We've kind of been defending like this all season. So mm -hmm. a result like this, I'm not even too, like I'm mad, but I'm not even too mad because we've had games very similar to this, but kind of got away with it. You saw when Salah scored and then obviously it was uh, marked off for offside. Usually we would have a game like this. He scores, we then score another, we then score another. And then it overshadows the overall or the performance preceding yeah, yeah, yeah. that but we've had this kind of performance like however many times don't know how many times i've come on here and said that but as tom said you win the game so mm. people look at that as mentality mm. monsters or you know you're, you're fantastic and you're, you're this that and yeah which liverpool have been let's not rubbish liverpool for the whole season this is just one game you hit you get what i'm trying to say but you saw you saw the bad and the ugly from from Liverpool tonight, defensively, yeah. going forward, midfield, everything. So it is what it is. It is what it is. Uh, he, there's a comment here I want to post you for one of our members. Uh, Ola is a Liverpool fan. He says, first loss at Anfield since February 2023. I think he's meant, I think he meant to say calm, calm down to the chat. Hmm. But isn't just is it just the just the defeat once in or is it this this may put you out of winning a cup competition? Surely it deserves scrutiny, even though it's your first defeat at home in, in 14 months, 15 months. It, well, yeah, 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 yeah. Our, la our last defeat at home was 5-2 to Real Madrid. Another embarrassing display in Europe when the lights are shining brightest. That's two yeah, right. embarrassing defeats in European knockout stages now. That's he, he, I'm, I'm sorry. I think it's, 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 not, it's not even that, because ultimately, we want Liverpool to be at the business end of the season winning trophies, competing at the top end. And if that's what you want, then if, if we just lost a random game, it would, I, I wouldn't really care. But 
one of the things that I wanted from this season, because after last season we, was was poor, I don't think many Liverpool fans thought we would be going for the league this season. But I thought the Europa League was our good a good opportunity for us to get Champions League football. Uh, uh, so good, excuse me, sorry, a good opportunity for us to win a trophy and potentially get Champions League football if the league didn't go well. The league has gone much better than we've expected, so I'm totally fine. That, that's uh, that's great. But this is an opportunity to win a trophy, a European trophy. Liverpool's heritage is built on on winning European trophies, and I understand if it's one game in isolation, I'll take your point. But this was a shocking display, and it means that we are now very unlikely, not impossible, because Klopp has said it before, you know, if it was anybody else, maybe it would be impossible. It's not impossible, but it's very, very, very difficult now to go to Atalanta and overturn a 3-0 result. Yeah, um, and I want to throw this to Sam before we go to some of these super chats and more points. Do you think that's it now? Do you think you're out, or can you see a turnaround as we saw against Barcelona, as we've seen against AC Milan? Could there be a magical night next week for Liverpool, or do you think that's curtains in this competition for you, mate? The short answer is no, we're out. Uh, I don't, I don't care. I don't care. What have you seen on Liverpool's attack this season that we can score? Three to four goals, but also keep out at Atalanta. They they bodied us all over the pitch. They, it was it was kind of like I had to start laughing at the end because it was kind of like, what can we do? What can you do? Because the team was poor, the um the performance was poor, Klopp was poor, everything about it was poor. And the fact of the matter is this: it's not just this one game. We drew to Man United. Poor. The, um, after the, um, before the international break, we, we lost against United in the FA Cup. So this has been a run of games where we have been playing absolutely crap. Crap. And this is the business end of the season. This is where your performances and results are supposed to be peaked. Yet it seems like it's going down the hill. And I, I don't know what's going on. That they um Liverpool um players think that you can come into a, a Europa League tie, maybe it's the Europa League, I don't know, a quarter final, and think you can walk it. Are you flipping mad? Are you mad? Disrespecting Atalanta, who actually played their hearts out, and you can see at the, I wanted every Liverpool player to stand outside after that match and watch At- 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 Atalanta play as players celebrate with their fans. See how much it means to them. See how much it means to them. There's a reason why we're in this competition. It's because of the crap show that we showed last season. So you play your hearts out. But anyways, we're out. I'm, I'm saying this. I'm, I, I, I do not care. We are out. There's nothing to show this season where we can come back from free, no def- deficit. We are out. Listen, I, I think it's going to be very... Di- I do agree. I think it's going to be very difficult. I'm not... I'm saying, like, you're 95% out. I think with Liverpool, there's always that 5% chance, and that's me, that's me being very, very fair. Uh, Dio, it was you watched that from a rival's perspective tonight. Were you shocked to see this happen to Liverpool? I was. I mean, I was shocked. I'm not going to lie. Um, I... I was shocked. That's, that's all I can say. Like, it wasn't... This is as much as... I hear Liverpool fans saying, no, they're not playing well this season. They're lucky or they've only been, you know, getting by because of one reason or the other. Or they keep saying, like, their attack is shocking. Liverpool is still Liverpool, right? So there's a level of, hey, teams that you will play and you shouldn't be losing 3-0 to Atlanta. To Atlanta, like, that's not a, that, that shouldn't be happening. You know, regardless, regardless of what condition Liverpool is in. I mean, if you put Van Dijk, and you put a striker up front and you put your goalie, you should still be able to confident, conveniently beat Atalanta 2-1. Like, I'm taking the piss by saying that, but it's 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 Liverpool. So for me, it's like, I was shocked. This, the second goal, I was like, hold on, what's going on here? 2-0? 83rd minute, the third goal, and I was like, this is not happening. As a rival, I'm just like, this is not, this is a dream. It has to be a dream. Because in my, in my head, I was like, Liverpool are going to go on and win the Europa, Europa in my head and would challenge to the last day for the title and Arsenal will win it. You heard it here first. Um, but with this kind of display, 
yo, I was, I was, I was flabbergasted. I was like, nope, it's, it's not. This is not real. But it is, it is. I mean, it, it's, it's. I don't know if Klopp announcing that he's leaving, and the initial hype of it um, gave them that boost. You know, at the very beginning of the season, like when they were like, oh, Klopp is leaving. Let's do it for Klopp. But it, it's, it's been going on so long. It's lost its steam. And now maybe. I, and I'm just I'm, I'm saying I'm saying on I'm saying on the mentality like I'm saying on the mentality of the players I'm not saying like you know um I'm not saying oh, that's the reason because it doesn't it's, it's not I'm it's, not saying it's the reason I'm saying you know that see multiple things can be true at the same time right which is if you you can play badly and you can have you're mentally not ready for something those two things can happen simultaneously I'm not saying this is the sole reason I'm saying maybe it's just not Maybe that's part of the things that they, they feel like Klopp is leaving and he's not, you know, whatever but, it is. It could be a mental thing as they, well. But Dale, okay. though, if you actually look at how we've been performing this season, it is our squad's quality in attack that has been getting us through these games. Look at when we beat Fulham. McAllister had to come up with a worldie. Endo had to come up with a worldie. Look at Sheffield. McAllister had to come up with a worldie. We... We, we've been saying this for years. You can't just rely on your players' quality to get through games. Look at United. I think it was under either Ralph or the beginning of Ole's tenure. United, they were getting through games because they had quality on the pitch. And that ran out and they became shit. And the problem with this Liverpool team is these guys are not the same guys who turned around Barcelona 4-0 at Anfield. They're not. You have Salah and Van Dijk who are getting towards the end of their careers. You have younger guys. And then you have a manager who is insisting on playing some guys we know are not good enough for this club just because he just wants to romanticize everything. And today, the ugly side of Klopp and the ugly side of our club showed itself. We love romanticizing things and turning everything into a story. Why the fuck is Costa Simica still a livable player? We all know he's not good enough, but he's still playing for our club. Why? James Milner, Jordan Henderson, all of these guys, they stayed too long. Why? Because everything needs to be romanticized. And nights like this come up and everyone acts surprised. How can this happen to Liverpool? We know why it happens. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. Stop. Are you literally just calling now Simicast? When there was other... How many players on the pitch... I'm not just calling out Simicast, bro. Let me finish. I'm not just calling out Simicast. They called out other players as well. (laughs) If you you actually let me finish, I'm going to call out the other players. Thank you. Cool, then you have Don it. Nunez who can't hit the fucking side of a barn door. Why is why is he starting? Why do we why do we have a manager like I think it was Tom who said Cody Gagpo was having a very good game and then all of a sudden he shifts how Gagpo was being implemented. Why? For what reason? The issue is there though, Sire. You've said why you're starting Nunez. There's literally not been anyone else to start because the only player you would start ahead of him has been injured. So it's start him or who? Because as you've just said, Gakpo is better on the left. So I don't want to play him up front because he's a bit ineffective up front at the minute. So I have to start yeah. Nunes. I just don't want the chances falling to Nunes, but they fall to Nunes. Certain players have been good this season, but everyone today let themselves down. I, oh. I, I've been with you on Simicas that I don't think he's good enough. Simicas has had decent performances this season. This isn't a case of, oh, th- this is exactly what we all knew was going to do. This result was coming. A result like this was coming. So, but yeah, it was. This performance wasn't. The performance is the bigger concern here. Well, tonight, it's, it's just, I, I think it was a, 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 like a perfect storm of everything. And, and I wanted to ask you this question, Rat, because I know you came on here a few months ago and was slaughtered for your conversation about Darwin Nunes. But I think his conversion rate is at 11%. Today, he has four shots, only one on target, which wasn't particularly good. I think he missed some guilt edge chances. And I saw a compilation the other day that showed some huge chances of him missed in the Premier League, which if he scored would give you guys, I think, an extra seven points. Is it time for Liverpool to start looking beyond Darwin Nunes this summer? Because he misses chances. I'm not saying he's a bad footballer overall. But he's just, is he just too wasteful with an 11% conversion rate, not scoring enough goals when it really matters? Or is there still a player in him you think can get Liverpool over the line? Is there a player in him? Maybe. I don't think there's been anywhere near enough signs to say that that's the case. Um, I mean, I, don't, I haven't checked it recently, but back then when we were talking about it, we were looking at his 
his actual goals versus the expected goals per 90, right? Anyone knows about, about statistics will kind of understand where that's coming. That's how many goals you expect to, to, to score versus how many you're actually scoring based on the number of games you played. At that point, he was 510th out of 512 players in the Premier League. That's ridiculous. That is, that was, wow. Now, look, it does, does he give us more than pure goals GA? Sure, maybe you can argue that. But is that to also potentially to the detriment of the, t- of the team as a whole? I think there's a case to be argued for that as well. And look, again, we're fighting at the business end of the season. We want Klopp to have a good send-off. We want to win trophies. You know, I don't think right now Nunes is as effectual as other players potentially can, especially when we... The thing is, ultimately, we spent £100 million on him, or €100 million Euros on him, right? That also brings added pressure, added expectation. And, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. No, I'm, I, I I'm, not, you, I'm not his biggest fan, you. and he's got, he's got massive deficiencies in his game. Do you know what? Do you know, I hear where you're coming from. He scores some great goals. But when you look at a lot of his missed chances, they're unbelievable misses. The, yeah. you know, I think back to the one against Luton as an example. That's mm. going to have a very, I, I assume, when it comes to what you've said, goal scored versus expected goal scored. That's going to be massive on that because that's probably like a, a 0.99% chance of scoring. And I'm not trying to be hyperbolic here. I feel like just this season alone, he may have missed five plus chances like that. Oh, and... Yeah. Probably, but are other elite strikers missing that abundance of simple chances? Gen- oh, his, genuine his, his decision-making is amazing. Look, 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 his look, his decision-making, Darwin Nunes' decision-making is amazing at making the incorrect decision. Every <laughs> single time he's in front of goal, he makes the incorrect decision. Even the goals he scores, and I remember the one he scored against Brentford, that is the incorrect finish you've just scored. <laughs> it's not the correct finish. Tom's how right. do you actually, it, it, it's remarkable how consistently good he is at picking the incorrect finish. And today, you saw it again. Played through one goal by the one good thing Curtis Jones done today with that through ball. All you do is you either take it round the goalkeeper and tap it into the empty net, or you open your body up and put it in the far right corner. You don't try and chip the goalkeeper with the inside of your right foot. And, and that would the, never the, work. Why have you tried that? And he does this every single game. I like his work rate. His work rate's good. But ultimately, for an £80 million attacker, at points in a season where I need my big players to turn up, I do need more than running round and Nunes, Nunes, Nunes. I need more than that. You've had big moments this season, like against Forest away. But I, uh, I can't expect that. I'm sorry, this, this I'm running also, around also, ain't going to cut it. It's, gonna, it's not going to cut it anymore. I'm not going to lie to you. It ain't going to cut it. And I've been having so much grace on Nunes. So much grace on Nunes. He is just not that striker. So if you just say it now, it's just not that striker. He scores the hardest of chances, but misses the easiest of chances, which I do not get. Because you're going to get more easy chances than you get hard chances. So naturally, you're going to score more goals if you score your easy chances than the harder chances. And it's the thing of Tom, Tom hit it on the nail the head. His decision making is so minus 10 IQ on the football pitch. It is, it, it's in fathom, like, I can't fathom how he thinks sometimes. Let's take it back to the game against Man United. Diaz plays a brilliant ball to, um, what's it called, to Nunes. All he just has to do is look back and pass it to Shabazz like, or actually hit it on goal. Mm. Guess what he does? Yeah. Neither. Hits it straight across goal to... I, thought, I, I, I pray he wasn't even passing it to Diaz because he was unreachable at that time. Mm. But he hits it across goal. And you're looking at Nunes thinking... Do you, do you know what I feel like you guys are going for a little bit? And I know you didn't quite have this with strikers in the 90s after, after the era of Ian Rush and what they won because you had Owen uh, prior to that, you had you had Fowler. But I think you had in other areas of the pitch where you had Mane, you had Firmino, you, Mo Salah is obviously still there. Maybe not quite the player he was overall, but he's still there. And so far, what you have purchased to replace those individuals just isn't of those standards. And what I'm seeing from Liverpool fans, and I understand it, is the give them time. And I understand you've got to give players time, a couple of years maybe. But the difference between you maybe and say Man United right now or Chelsea is 
you've got a manager that's been there and a system that's been there and infrastructure. You're not, you're in a process of sort of replenishing the squad, but it isn't like the club's in a rebuild and it's, it haven't got a broken system per se. I think there's some issues with it. So when I look at someone like Nunes now getting towards two years in, you look at Gakpo by the end of this season, it's going to be 18 months in. To still hear, like, I was here listening to James, uh, Steve McMadaman talk about, yeah, and he's time, still young lads. I'm sitting there thinking, have we not listened to what? I know it only came out about Man City when Man United got Omar Barada. But when you s- sit back and listen to that City press conference and they're like, we essentially give players to, to players, managers, coaches, scouts two years. And if you ain't delivering or you don't look like you're going to deliver, we move you on to keep processing. Liverpool Football Club don't want to do what they did in the 90s, in the 2000s, where you end up sticking with slight, either slightly or completely substandard players for more than a couple of years because you did that before and look where you ended up as a football club. I think you need to be a little bit more ruthless and a little bit more honest with how these players are doing. Darwin, is he a good player? Yes. Is he going to be the guy to shoot you to a Premier League title? I'm not too no. sure. He's, he's just not. He's, he's just not going to be that guy. The, the, pro- the problem is that I've, I've been saying this a lot recently and I don't know if it's... Some people may be picking up or not, but people talk about a rebuild. Yes, we... And, and Klopp 2.0 and all this kind of stuff. The biggest players of the Klopp era, <coughs> the most important players, in my opinion, the Klopp era, are Alisson, Van Dijk and Mo Salah. We have a situation where Van Dijk and Salah's contract end in, in, in 12 months' time, pretty much. Um, it wouldn't surprise me. Salah, uh, Terry's smiling. I know, I can see it. <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Um, <laughs> so, and and so, so Salah may be gone this summer. I looked at Van Dijk's reaction after the Man United game when he came out and he said, we did it to ourselves again, right? That's not a positive, um, that's not a positive attitude to have because ultimately... Is there potential for, for Van Dyke to say, you know what, I'm going to be 33 years old next season. Let me go and ha- have a last challenge, go and play in Barcelona for you know two years or go and play in Milan for two years or something like that. A different challenge. He's not going to stay in England, I don't think. Um, I can see that happening both on a, as a footballer and as a person. That would be a good experience for him to have. And then Alisson, I think his contract ends, ends the year after. We de- Replacing those three players who have been the mainstays of our team in the Klopp era, is going to be much more difficult replacing any of the others, in my opinion. And I, I don't envy the new manager. I, I to- totally understand that. Um, I'm going to go to some super chats. I'm going to throw out to you, for, you, to you, for you all to answer. Um, we have got a football gods moment tonight as well. This was a Liverpool fan who tweeted last night. Oh, he says, really can't wait uh, to be in the Champions League next season. Arsenal... United and Newcastle have been absolute embarrassment representing the Premier League this season. Mm. He has deleted it now, but this is the thing. Mm. You don't tempt, you don't tempt those football mm. gods until after your game. Can Learn I, can this, just, people. Can I just Learn it real quickly? A, disc- a disclaimer. That is not me. That is yeah. not my <laughs> that's not, yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's not, not me. That's not me. That's hey, not Jerry. Samuel. Jerry, I have two football gods moments. I have Mr. 16 out of 10 himself, Ryan telling me when the draw was made about a team he don't know about that he don't watch that I watch Liverpool are in the final basically haha Atalanta and I said no 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 they match up with you stylistically to a T I actually picked Atalanta to to advance I thought that they would draw tonight but I'm the only one not (laughs) super super shocked seriously they match up well they match up extremely well with with um with Liverpool and tonight showed it in Serie A they do this. They can outmuscle teams. Mm. They can outrun them. The three at the back is the way forward for football as well. Um, that's a lot to just did everything right I mean, tonight. Yeah, did. Did. The fact that they though he just told his place and man mark and our plays shit the bed yeah. and went, oh my god, how do we? And you can't do that against this? Gasparini at the last. You can't. Pass yeah. the pitch. Gasparini. I think there's part of that, Tom. But I also would say this. I think. Gasparini absolutely outdid Klopp today. He, uh, he, he just he, he was a, it was a tactical because pound for pound they're not as good. They got smacker up front. It was, it was a they, 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 but it wasn't anything revolutionary. It was the basics. No, 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 no one admit me, but most football isn't. Not, 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 we're not saying he's invented the wheel tonight or he, or he discovered fire, but he just looked at Liverpool and how you were set up and how you play and said this way is going to win. They had to be brave because they had to commit. The one thing when you play Liverpool and City. 
Half the time, teams can like keep you out for ages, but they don't score because they're not brave enough in the counter attack where they commit three, four, five players forward. And they did that so well tonight. So I think they deserve a lot of credit. Sorry, you were going to say did, something, Sam? Yeah, they did what Arsenal did to us when playing man to man. And when I saw it, I was like, Arsenal did the same thing to us. Where I remember the FA Cup, even though we won, won the FA Cup in the first half, Arsenal were playing man to man and they were, they were going to each man, just pressing them, just waiting for waiting for a mistake. And they, they made us uh, make mistakes. And I saw the same thing with Atalanta. They, they were doing the same thing. And this is what Klopp needs to um, figure out because at this point, as Tom is right, these players are thinking who, what, where and how when, when they have the ball. And they're making stupid passes. They they mm-hmm. can't keep the ball. Like, Endo has been brilliant this season in general, but Endo cannot keep up. He can't put his body in front of a ball to try and protect it. Then we've got McAllister. That was probably his worst game of, 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 of the season. He, but he's, he's, been, he's been brilliant, but I'm not going to give him too much um, criticism. But that was probably his worst game. Gomez can't keep a ball for I don't know what at all. So Bozlai, that was, oh my word. He, 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 he's, he's, um, him losing the ball actually, um, Sobber, Sobber is a weird one. I want to ask you guys about Sobberslide. He's a weird one. He started off the first two months. I looked at him for, oh my God, what a player. I would say since about November onwards, he is, I'm, I'm not saying this for a reaction. I mean it. I, I haven't seen a difference in the last three or four months, him compared to McTominay. He just looks bang average, probably better on the ball. <laughs> Just ineffective. Like, what's gone wrong with him after such a great start? I personally think that being accustomed to the role that Klopp has given him, he is, is, I think he's a little bit tired because you have to realise the role that Sobosla does. Now, defensively, he, he's actually quite good. And I'm talking about in general this season. Defensively, he's quite good. He brings the energy. But especially when it comes to attacking, I realise, have you realised that his passes, when he's passing... Oh, oh I don't know what happened there, but you're back. <laughs> that was strange. <laughs> right, can everyone still hear me? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. this Merseyside shutting us down. <laughs> <on days. laughs> but every time he tries to pass the ball forward, and this is from a couple of matches, he doesn't actually hit the person. It's always uh, like the, the the pass has no power or something, and he and he's very lackluster on the, like tonight's game. He's trying to pass it, trying to dribble it, p- trying to pass it back. It, the, the pass was weak. And I don't, I, I don't know what it is with Shabazzlan because he's a good player. There's no doubt about it. He's a good he, he's player. He's got the wrong role. We're, we're making him do the wrong role. He needs Trent. I hear it. Our, our, our team basically just looks at Sob. If Shabazzlan doesn't play and you saw it in that first half today, yeah. we do not progress the ball. Exactly. No one from midfield progresses that ball forwards. So exactly. we just end up with it stuck in midfield. Mm. Trent is needed so Sabastide doesn't have to come he can do it occasionally he can bring it out sometimes what we have now when you play Connor Bradley or Joe Gomez at right back every, every single time you want to go forward Sabastide has to carry it 30 yards in a full sprint mm. by the time he's done the third or fourth one he's blowing out his arse going can anyone else help Let's me do it, yeah. Robinson does it occasionally but it's not mm. enough Sobosai has to do it 90% of the time. That's why half the passes go with strike. Don't get me wrong, some of them were stupid, i.e. the yeah. ones that us for that goal. But most mm. of the time, in the final third, when everyone's having a moan room, it's because he's had to do five of these runs to create anything. The first three he done today actually led to a good pass at the end of it. After that, it went wet, it went haywire because he was goosed at that point. He needs Trent at right back. So sometimes he doesn't have to do the running. Sometimes you can give it to Trent, who can play a 50-yard pass to the other side, and all of a sudden you progress the ball. When Trent and Sobos are on in that team, that ball does not progress forwards quick enough. I'm and today that let us down. I'm going to quickly say one more thing, and then I'll, I'll, move, I'll move on. This is why when Liverpool fans were saying, oh, I don't mind Conor Bradley playing instead of Trent, I'm like, what are you talking about? You don't understand the level that Trent gives to this team, when it comes to his passing, when it comes to unlocking defences, when it comes to switching balls and actually playing a lot quicker than what we are playing. And Tom is absolutely right. It's the role that Shabozla has, that he's doing so much of the other stuff that when he, when he's actually doing something that he, like he's actually good at doing, which is an attacking stage, he's too tired to do even, even actually make a good decision or even make a good pass or something like that. 
for me, we have really missed people like Jota, and and I know Jota missed two chances, but um, he he's he's missed like how many months of football now? Yeah. Um, and also, what's it called? Um, we've missed Trent as well. And what we've missed is because when we have Joe Gomez at, uh, at left back or right back, and then Connor Bradley, we're not having those guys that bring in the ball for, like like a Trent that can actually switch play quickly or give balls straight into the attack where we're moving fast and moving direct. Mm. I, 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 I hear you on that 100, 110%. Let's go to some of these super chats now. Um, I want to throw out to some of you all. Uh, Buying having one of their best seasons of all time. I mean, they are. I mean, they, they scored those two late goals. They're pretty much through. I can't see. I they're can't gonna, see they're not going to lose a game this season. They're going to win everything. I, I, I can. I know they're going the to do something that I've never seen. And I, they, I mean, it's yeah. not the champion. It's not the Champions League. So the Europa. But yeah. if they win the Pokal, the Europa League, and the Bundesliga without losing a game. Would that be the first tr- inv- truly invincible season in top flight ever? I, I looked it up on Wikipedia the other day because you can Google you can Google invincible teams in club football. And I couldn't find the closest thing that I found in the modern day was Porto in 2011-12. They were in four comps. They didn't win the Portuguese League Cup, but they lost they won the Europa the Tassa de Portugal, Portuguese Cup, and they won the league. So they did do a treble, but they did yeah. lose to Sevilla in one yeah, of the... Yeah, but that's, that's what I mean. I, 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 yeah. I, 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 it would take some research. I don't know of a team that's won the three trophies it's in without losing a single game in any of those. Obviously, you can't lose in the Pacal, but to do it in... it That would be crazy if they do it. Uh, Liverpool's downfall, sponsored by Man United. Yeah, I'd like. <laughs> I, think, I think we should take a, a, a. If you guys fall off from here, listen, that's going to be our trophy this season. I'm telling you. Uh, Arsenal drew against six times European giants, whilst Liverpool got battered by six play Atalanta. No, no, no. Yeah, the difference is we are six times European giants, whatever your name is, paramedic Guna. We are six times European <laughs> champions. You can shut your mouth. Yeah, one thing I'm not going to take is banter about Europe from an Arsenal fan. Allow me on that, man. Bush here says, not a great night for the Prem and people disrespect other European leagues. Hey, Villa won. Oh. We got Villa. Oh. No, no, I, think people, I think people, I think people yeah, do. I think people do disrespect it, but I don't think it's often... I think a lot of the disrespect comes from us where we try and pretend like we don't care. And the one thing you see from all the European teams when they're in this is their fans want to win it. I feel like we have lied for two generations now about how important everything is other than the Premier League and Champions League, that the younger generation actually don't care about it that much. So they find themselves just dismissing other European teams, which is crazy. Plus, Mm. you know, other European teams put out their strongest team possible. We don't. Uh, Smash the likes for Liverpool getting slapped. Thank you. Get that done. Uh, like, I want to put the like buttons here. Uh, City and Arsenal against European giants, the likes of Madrid and Bayern uh, in the Champions League. And Liverpool were the joke of the week against Atalanta, is what AJ says. Mm. Uh, Elliot, dive on dive on that. Uh, tell you about Karma. She's real. <laughs> well, wait, he <laughs> shot the nearly went in was pretty good, wasn't it? Uh, panel, please, please, starting from today, let's not disrespect any team... Uh, on cup matches, uh, as long as it's 11 v 11, it's a fair game. Um, 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 They won't be careful careful about what disrespecting is. I think predicting Liverpool to win this game is not disrespectful. I think saying they're crap because they're a Serie A team, that's when it becomes disrespectful. I think that that, they're already in the final because it's a Serie A. Here's all I ask of... Because, again, I watch a lot of European football. I know I'm the, the, the exception of the rule watching all the games, right? But all I ask is, so let's say, so I thought I'd play Hellas Verona on Monday. Watch that game instead of the Chelsea Everton one so you can see what I talk to like at home, at our, our, our at at home. Because at home... Oh, no, I, I need to watch Everton go down, though. I need to, wa- I need to watch <laughs> Everton. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Obviously, so. that's what you do. Dual screen, yeah. dual screen. But seriously, that's that I, I don't think is unreasonable. Because if you watch them domestically and then you play them in Europe, at least you're like, I have a rough idea of what they're mm. like. Are oh, here? Do you guys do you guys think that Liverpool win the Prem now? What would you make of that, G? Do you think this is going to have any impact on on the Premier League form for for, for Liverpool? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think we'll 
whatever was going to happen on Sunday, whether it was going to be a win, loss or draw, I still think it will happen. I think we'll win on Sunday and I think we'll win kind of comfortably as well. I think, <laughs> listen to everybody and read, like, seeing the chat and stuff. Two, like a month ago when I was on here, the conversation was, we are like one of the best teams. We're this, we're that. Mm. Two games and all of a sudden now, from what I'm hearing, and I'm usually the one who used to come on here and be negative, but the way that everybody speaks about Liverpool now is like, yeah, we're crap. We ain't gonna do this. We're gonna, like we're still top of the the. Well, sorry, we're behind in the Premier League, um. So we can still potentially win that. It's not like we're miles off. I know we just lost three nil, but let's yeah, you know I mean let, let, let's let's be real, guys. Would anyone on this panel or in the chat be surprised if Liverpool go there and win five nil? Probably not. Do you know what I mean? It will probably be typical Liverpool go there, win 5 0, into the semi finals, and everyone keeps their mouth quiet. I would so be listening to every listening to everybody speak. I mean, we've done it before. So that, that I can only go based upon, you know, right. based upon that. But at the same time, I, I hear what you're probably gonna say in terms of the way Atalanta are. So I, I get that. I'm not saying that they're a rubbish team, by the way, like because mm -hmm. I knew they were gonna be tough kind of thing. Yeah. But like it, they've been still, around the past few years right. in Europe. This is like and a this brand is, new and and this is it. Like we've seen Liverpool this season. This this is it. Like I, I just listening to everybody speak. I'm just a bit like, but we didn't really have this kind of energy before when we were putting in kind of performances like this. When teams were getting in the way that Atalanta yeah. was getting in, but not scoring. But yeah. we weren't sitting here having this. Do you know what it is? Do you know what it is? I just think with when it was like there was performances before. What I was also taking into account for me was that the amount of injuries that we had. So when we were like scraping a lot of um, our, our wins or our performances weren't that great, but we we'll still win. I would look at it thinking, all right, before I actually thought that we would fall off. The fact that we're still, or well, at the time, probably still top. The fact that we were in that many competitions, I was thinking, all right, that's that's actually quite good and quite unexpected for us to actually do that because of the amount of injuries. For me, what's annoying me is that it's been actually be annoying me for quite a couple of times uh, this season is that Liverpool come into games and play like the 5-0 up. I yeah. always say I hate that. I absolutely hate that. Because you, you come in the game and think you already won the game. That is flipping arrogant. Flipping arrogant. Also to the point of the matter is that I'm also getting that the Liverpool fans that wanted to get knocked out of the Europa League earlier in the season to um, focus on the Premier League. And that really annoys me because it's kind of like, don't disrespect any competition. Mm. And, you went, went, and Liverpool... The recent Liverpool thrive off multiple games, momentum, going into games, winning, winning, and winning, and winning, and winning. Us, I haven't seen us do well when we've lost the game mm. and then try to bounce back from it straight away. Or a now, drop recently, to get our Man United on Sunday. Exactly. So recently, we haven't really bounced back from games actually quite well. And that's quite worrying to me because of the fact that it's, it's coming to the end of the season and it's crunch time of the season. Yeah, now, yeah. if next, next season... Uh, not I said next season, next week. If we go and beat At Atalanta 4-0 or 5-0, which is possible, I know I said we're out, but I won't be surprised by that. But from the evidence I'm seeing of right now, I can't see it happening because there's too many mistakes that we have been making yeah, currently this, um, oh, at this specific time of the season. Yeah, listen, I, I agree. I, I get where you're both coming from. And I'd say this to you, G, I, I'm not writing Liverpool off right now. I, I, I still have you as my favourites. Yes, you've had a couple of bad games. And look, you could collapse from this point and, and, and fall out the title race, go out this competition. And it could happen, but I wouldn't put money on that right now. I mean, maybe going out of this tournament, you might put a bit of money on it now, but I, I'm not going to put you off falling out of the league at this point. I think that's that, that would be too far. Uh, the players didn't even uh, didn't even try, and Klopp is a bottle. I can't wait for a fresh start. Embarrassing from everyone. Stel Diaz, Gakpo, and Nunes. I will say, I will, I will say myself, three attack. You know, as much as all the caps say, we're not going to sell three attackers in one window. Yeah, that's a stupid comment. That's a stupid comment. <laughs> I was, I was going to say, <laughs> what I do want of the next manager, and I've, I've praised, everybody knows this, I praise Klopp. He's one of my favourite managers of all time. But this whole sentimental thing with Klopp, I just pray that we get a new manager and he stops with that sentimental stuff. And he's actually he's actually ruthless with certain players in the team and certain, um like, if players are getting on, then just move them on and bring in other guys. That's all I, I hope for. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think, to be honest, Sam, I think 
to some extent, whoever the new manager is, that's going to be taken out of his hands. So I think one of the reasons Michael Edge was, has come back um, is that they, they want to go back to a structure where there's collective decision-making. And ultimately, I think um, Hughes is going to be the main guy, along with Edwards, who's going to be making those decisions. It's not going to, there's not going to be a situation where it be Amarim or whoever comes in mm. and they're going to be giving contracts to 33-year-old Jordan Henderson, for example. No, that's fair, like that's, that. fair. that's fair, that's fair. Yeah, I hear you on that. Um, let's go here. This says, uh, am I the only one who is fed up with the higher line? We give up too many chances every game, including against poor teams. The season is petering out. The high line this is, is the problem. This, this it's is the what people yeah, trying like, to employ we, it to constantly drop off in it. Every yeah. single time you watch us get caught out, it's not because the high line's bad, because you will see three out of the four players playing someone offside. Exactly. It is who it is take your pick out of which defender has decided to pick his nose or start picking at his nails or switch off for three seconds or and then play follow, everyone else on. Yeah. Honestly, it it, it it's all one good holding this high line, but you all have to be concentrated. And yeah, switched on and hold yeah. the line. Is there's a reason it says hold the line? Like, not ooh, I was watching. Too. I was watching by, by the Bayer Leverkusen game as well. I haven't watched much of them this year. I just again, I, I'm never someone that pretends to. I'm not like Strasbourg Steve that watches a hundred screens at once. I can't <laughs> do it, right? I can't do it. But I watched them, and I was watching it as my brother and me were watching it together. And I was like, you see how their shape is? They actually at one one of their early attacks in the game. I was like, look mm. at that. Their back line was about. 15 to 20 yards into West Ham's half. I'm like, my team, deep yeah. back line, one midfielder and everybody else pushing up. And you guys do that compactness. And then, as you say, it slowly drifts apart. And that's where the holes appear. Yeah. Uh, this year uh, from uh, Surin says, uh, why is it uh, we didn't, we don't put the best 11 on the pitch to start? Yeah. It makes no sense to me. He surely has uh, to next week. I, I think what your manager has done, I think he's, prioritize the game at the weekend and this is when he decided to rotate and it's just backfired you started off poorly and the sub normally you bring on the big boys and it kicks you into gear and it didn't i think he's just pro you know could argue depends what happens now this weekend and what happens in the prem but maybe he made the wrong decision but uh, terry was the team that sorry to even cut you like that but i hear what people are saying yeah okay there was one or two but let's not sit here and pretend like that team was so bad that it was a 3 0 defeat. Bad, oh, like, yeah. it should have been good enough to still do better. Like, we're, we're making, I feel like we're making it a lot of excuses no, for oh, the lineup you. wasn't strong enough. I, kind of I, thing. Like, I think, uh, like I said, I think if I was Gasparini, I wasn't the best, wasn't the best. yeah, yeah, I agree as well. I think if I was Gasparini, I would have used it as like a lot of it. Uh, they're, they're disrespecting us, but in reality, yeah, yeah, yeah. you missed an abundance of chances as well. Exactly. That if you take, exactly. yeah, 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 I agree. Uh, Nikhil here says, uh, Paul fans mocking us for drawing 2-2 in the Champions League first leg against Bayern. Paul's defence uh, won't get criticised since Paul are media darlings. Saliba and Gabriel aren't allowed to have a bad game. Come on, you gooners. So, so, sorry, can I just say this? Is that when, <laughs> when like, you had no fans in the stadium, first of all, and you were actually favourites to actually go and beat Bayern because you were current form. You drew 2-2. Now, everybody cooked you or criticised you Finn, yeah. everybody is criticizing us fairly. Like, don't act like oh, you yeah. shouldn't be criticized. Like, we're getting criticized as well. We are criticizing this Liverpool team fairly on what has happened. We criticize you guys fairly on what happened yesterday, or sorry, on Tuesday. Was it Tuesday? Yeah, it was Tuesday. So, yeah. like, let's 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 stop with that. Let's really stop yeah. with that. Uh, Terry, can you please play the Tom Little clip on Jurgen Klopp? That would be a perfect for today's stream, just for a laugh. What clip was that? Uh, when I was on stream with you after we lost 2-0 to Wolves and I said, yeah, and it might be time to go. <laughs> I forgot about that. I forgot I mean, about that. I'm going to say, so they just backed my Amarim point. Amarim drew at home against Atalanta. Oh, oh Tom, let it go. Hey, but then let again, Atalanta, are, Atalanta <laughs> are unbeaten in four against Sporting. By the way, I watched all four of those games because they met in the group and then the knockers. I watched all four games were really good. Really good. Do you know what, Tom? I want every Liverpool manager to flop because it's Liverpool. But I really wanted to flop just to laugh at you. I'm not even lying. Uh, Red Indian here says, um, Tom, uh, do you think uh, he is, I think he's talking about Sobosai, too casual and not, no, no, uh, not, not serious? Uh, he needs to understand to play at a club like Liverpool being, oh, sorry, Darwin, sorry, being uh, the number nine, he needs to be responsible. I don't think it's a case of being casual or not being serious. I think it's just an issue he has. 
when he's trying yeah, yeah, hard, yeah, when he's not trying more. hard. It's just a deep rooted issue. We had this issue with Benfica. The, his numbers at us and Benfica are relatively the same. He just massively overperformed XG one year. Every other year, mm. he underperformed it. That should have been an alarming metric that we considered. That would have been mm. an alarming metric we considered in years gone by where certain people weren't leading the recruitment charge the same way. But, but also, they were, and we took the gamble, and we're now stuck it. with a striker right. who is brilliant at making incorrect decisions. He'd be fantastic. You, you ever seen them them clips of him? Um, you know, then people who do these multiple choice quizzes and get zero wrong or get zero right, and they're like, well, no, you, ha- you know all the answers because the odds are you get at least half of them right. Nunes <laughs> knows all the answers but gets them wrong. I, if I was in a test, I'd copy off him. I get 100%. It's incredible how many incorrect decisions that man makes. Do, do you know what's really funny? <laughs> Not funny, but it doesn't help when you get people like Jamie Carragher, who does influence what other people think and feel, does the whole king chaos he runs around a lot it's great for us i feel like that's fine for the first few months but the fact that he still kind of alludes to the lose to the chaos being a good thing i don't know if it is um i said to my friend that if sorry it was stupid by klopp to take his only dm off against such an amazing counter-attacking <laughs> side and minutes later they uh, went three up it's a great point. His, great his point. DM was horrendous anyway, though. Endo was horrendously bad today. Yeah, Ed- you should, Ederson. You should have went half time. By the way, Ederson put in a hell of a performance. That's why he's linked with Man United with Nuka. Mm. I thought Ederson, a, a lot of, I don't think any of that thought, maybe Isaac Hine was a bit off, but all the other thoughts to play, like, for real. Phenomenal. Also quickly, they only made one sub. They only made one sub, by the way, Mirancho. One sub. Also, yeah. quickly, um, it wasn't because um, Klopp took um, um, Endo off. It's because Shabos Lai lost the ball. That's why they scored. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> uh, Tom, uh, say what you like, but uh, Dominic Shabos is the undisputed flop of the season. Henderson was never this bad. Oh, he was. Oh, Henderson was this bad. Do we not remember games like Leeds at home last season? Oh, yeah. Henderson was worse than this. You're playing Zobosly in the Henderson role when Zobosly at Leipzig and for Hungary is more of an attacking midfielder. Yeah. Yeah. But we're, we're playing him in the Henderson role without any of the the good infrastructure that matched Henderson's deficiencies. So when I'm just seeing the, yeah, the issues of this role in general, bring, bring back Hendo. There we go. Our job solved. <laughs> uh, nah, this is a head loss. We got bantered for a draw against Bayern, and y'all don't want to take the banter now. How low is what Tevin says? Jesus. I'm not taking the banter. We, we're criticizing our own team. We're saying that we were awful. We made awful decisions. Uh, yeah. We things at a crucial point in the season when yeah. everything is there to play for. People talked about Arsenal dropping off. There's only t- one team that right now that looks like dropping off. I said on Sunday, the worst result of our season was us not beating Man United on Sunday. Look at Terry with that smile. I knew he'd smile. Um, <laughs> because, look, tell, I, I don't know if you think this is correct, no. but if they're not the worst team in the league, they're one of the worst teams in the league right now, Man United. Oh, we are. We are we are very, very poor. There's no doubt about yeah. that. Uh, Garrett here says, the Liverpool fans overrate their players even in, in this stream. Still calling VVD the best in the world right now is mad. We are witnessing a team that's bubble has burst. Again, this is this this is this is the point I'm trying to make is that one result always seems to always seems to change minds. Like I remember when Saliba was poor against Nottingham Forest for Arsenal, everyone then's calling him shit, you know. So it's like, but we know he's not, you know what I mean? Like one performance, even two yeah, to be honest, it's not really gonna we're talking about Van Dyke. Like I think put not even perspective, I think understand who you're talking about. Let's if it was someone else like Zabozalai, I get it because Liverpool fans were calling him the Hungarian Steven Gerrard. You're talking about Van Dijk. Like, let's understand that like, this is this is literally the best centre back in the world. So whether he has a poor game or not, he'd still be the best centre back in the world, regardless. Mm. So it's not going to change that man. Red Indians back again. He says, "Tom, I feel I feel he thinks that I missed this one, uh, but I will get another chance. Uh, but in a big game, you don't get big chances in that way. He's casual. He doesn't think about that. He thinks about drawing courses or what he's having for tea that night. He doesn't think about a footballing <laughs> context in that way. The, no, no, not, with, not with the way he plays football matches. And even if his mentality is, oh, sorry, I, I missed that one. Annoying, but I'll get the next one. He doesn't get the next one. He gets yeah. six a game. If, if that's his mentality... I'd hate to trust him on anything because it's just, I'll get the next one. Oh, no. I'll get the next one. Oh, no. I'll get the next one. Oh, no. When's it going to be? Oh, yes. Well done. 
He actually's better <laughs> than he scores his first chance. Uh, Garrett here says worst result against United, not performance. True, but performances yeah. at this point matter more than anything else. They really do, Garrett. But look, I want to thank all of the super chatters. Everyone who hasn't done it yet, go and check out NordVPN. Go and check out the offers we've got for you. But also read up on their website why it's so important to protect yourself online. It really is. Commiserations, Liverpool. Congratulations to um, Atalanta. Please hit the like buttons before you go. Panel, as ever, you've been amazing. You've been outstanding. Uh, thank you very, very much indeed. This show, by the way, is going to take you through to Straight Facts tomorrow with Staffy and, of course, Man Like Hussam. So be here, 3 p.m. UK time tomorrow. Yeah, we're having a early springtime barbecue. 